Hi Lisa, I wonder if you could elaborate on the relationship between love and bliss in the heart and the I am. I've been sinking the head expansion down into the heart the past week as you instructed and quite often I experience a communion with my beingness and warmth towards the world. When this feeling is there it's quite easy to connect but at times when I am contracted and this feeling is not there connection to the idea is much harder. Another experience is, is that the connection to the silence quite quality is easier as well when the bliss is present. Thank you for reminding me of this practice. I had an aha moment that practice actually can be pleasurable and easy and not everything is about transforming the shadow as my former teacher focused so much on. Hey Eric, um, yeah, I mean transforming the shadow is great but this is also super important and yeah of course when there is bliss there it's much easier to stay in the I am, right? The, the, the bliss is produced to an extent from expansion, so from um, n- not being identified with the seeking patterns, there is bliss. And so then when you go to practice, um, it's easier to stay in that bliss. And so when you're more contracted, there tends to be less bliss. But bliss is something that comes and goes, and it's more a response, because it's like the opposite, because as you've been contracted, then there is this bliss release that happens. So it's like I wouldn't let it, um, Give, you know, like um, take too much attention up. Um, yeah. It's just bliss. So it's like on the uncomfortable days, you can keep doing it as well. It's not true, or your contraction and the seeking. And on the bliss days, the bliss isn't true either, but it certainly makes it easier because there is less seeking there. That's an effect of it, but you. But there can be addiction to bliss, so you can then get into the cycle of like looking for the bliss. Like, why isn't it there? And then the rejection of feelings. Nice. Thanks, Eric.